There is a new book out about Richard Nixon. It's called One Man Against the World, The Tragedy of Richard Nixon. Tim Weiner is the author. He is the winner of the National Book Award and of the Pulitzer Prize, and he has written about national security for the New York Times. Good morning, Tim Weiner. Good morning, sir. What is it about Richard Nixon that just compelled you to spend (laughs) years researching him? Well, I grew up with Nixon. His presidency, I mean, not literally, his presidency (laughs) ran from the age when I was 12 until I was 18. He was the first president that really affected my life. And he's a fascinating man. He's the only president who ever had to resign in disgrace. He was in a constant state of turmoil. He made war in pursuit of peace. He committed crimes in the name of the law tore the country apart while trying to unite it. And finally, in his own words, he gave his enemies a sword, and they stuck it in, and they twisted it. And he fell from power, like a Shakespearean king. Tim, and I might- found out two years ago that the last of the famous secret White House tapes, hundreds and hundreds of hours, would finally be declassified by the end of 2014. And I said, I'm going to pounce on those tapes, I'm going to hear those tapes, I'm going to be the first to write about them, and I'm going to write the first complete history of his presidency. And let me tell you, these tapes rip your heart out. Why? He knew, President Nixon knew before he was sworn in for his second term that he was doomed. Because the cancer of the crimes of Watergate was spreading closer and closer and closer to the Oval Office. And he knew, 15 months before he resigned, he's having a exhausted, he sounds drunk, frankly, uh, after midnight call with his new Chief of Staff General, Alexander Haig, and he says, I can't fight this damn battle anymore. I, I, I ought to just quit now. I, I, I'm not at my best, and I can't fight the damn battle. But he did. He had to fight the damn battle, and he did for 15 more months. Tim, you, you mentioned that, that President Nixon said he wanted to be a good president, but that he had too many vices, and that, that prevented him in doing so. Well, he, the only real vice is that he trusted no one. He didn't trust his generals. He didn't trust his admirals. He didn't trust his ambassadors. He didn't trust his spy masters, and we were fighting a war. We had more than half a million troops in Vietnam. And he made policy in complete secrecy. He did not consult his Secretary of Defense or his Secretary of State when he expanded the war and invaded Cambodia. The nation exploded. The campuses went crazy. The National Guard shot more kids at Kent State as a consequence of that. When you when you close your inner circle so tightly that only you know what your war plans and strategies and intentions are, the book is called "Going to Screw Up." Tim Weiner, our guest, a Pulitzer Prize winner. The name of the book is "One Man Against the World: The Tragedy of Richard Nixon." Tim, here's what I don't understand, and that is. They broke into the Democratic headquarters. They didn't kill anybody. They didn't steal billions of dollars. They didn't torture anybody. Did anybody go to Nixon and say, hey, just admit it and move on? But there was so much more than just the break-in at the Watergate Hotel. That was one tiny incident, relatively speaking, in a whole line of what Attorney General and campaign manager John Mitchell called the White House horrors that went back for years. They, Nixon was fighting the Vietnam War on two fronts. Over there, he used B-52 bombers. Over here, he used bugs, break-ins, black bag jobs, burglaries to sabotage his political enemies, okay? For example, he broke in, he sent men to break in to the psychiatrist's office of Daniel Ellsberg, who had released the Pentagon Papers, The Secret History of the Vietnam War. You don't do that in a democratic society. You don't do it without a warrant, anyway. And these long line of warrantless wiretaps, break-ins, burglaries, buggings, 
if you revealed one, you would reveal all. So, and, he, so he and could... by the time the second term begins, he knows that this cancer is going to eat away his presidency. He knows he's doomed. Tim Weiner, our guest, I have one more question for you. It's a fascinating read, One Man Against the World, The Tragedy of Richard Nixon. Tim, if you could ask President Richard Nixon a question, what question would you like to ask him? Why didn't you burn the tapes? Because <laughs> <laughs> you had to listen to them, is that why? <laughs> and now that I've heard the newly released deep I think I have an answer. He could have done it. He alone could have done it, but he didn't have the courage. And then his aides and his lawyers saying, okay, let's have a bonfire in the White House. Who's going to strike the match? King Temaho? That was the president's not very faithful Irish setter. And so he, he, he wanted to, but he couldn't bring himself to do it. You got it. One man against the world, the tragedy of Richard Nixon. Uh, no question about it, he dominated the second half of the 20th century. Uh, Tim Weiner, winner of the National Book Award and the Pulitzer Prize. Tim, good luck with the book. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for taking the time to talk. You got it. The book, One Man Against the World, the Tragedy of Richard Nixon, the man who brought us Deflate Gate, or Gate, I guess, Watergate. All right, it <laughs> is uh, 9 o'clock. Coming up here, uh, Big 550.